The Place Where Nothing is Real Stories by M. A. Cat Savoy Copyright 2014 MLMC Gothic and Main Publishing Only Sleeping Midnight Damned Cat! Calvin jerked awake with a yell and realized too late that his outbursts would wake the neighborhood. His sudden lurching sent one of the cats scurrying off the bed. It also woke Katie from a pleasant slumber. Huh? She was groggy but awake, which surprised him, since she normally slept deeply through the night, even when he tossed and turned. Katie sometimes woke up when he walked back into the bedroom after getting up to get a drink of water or hit the john, but she usually just reacted with a grunt or sigh or simply by turning over. This time she actually awakened, which immediately made him feel guilty and silly about his reaction. What'd the cats do this time? He answered in measured tones, partially to calm himself down so they could get back to sleep. They've been rip-shitting all night. Want me to lock them out of the bedroom? Nah, he answered, putting his head back onto the pillow. They'll settle. One of them, can't tell which, jumped up onto my leg and scratched hard, probably when I jumped, that's all. He couldn't tell Desi and Jojo apart without his glasses. Desi, the female, who was named Desmond as a kitten before she was too young to sex correctly, was smaller and fluffier and had a smaller head, but without his glasses and in the dark, he couldn't tell her from the male. Jojo was sleeker, longer, larger, had a bigger head, a white patch on his chest, and had a knack for more human facial expressions. He was also the more playful of the two. But without his glasses, and sometimes even with them, they were just two interchangeable black cats. They'll settle, he repeated, mumbling. I hope so, Cal. Earlier that night, Jojo and Desi had started their zaniness by scurrying around the room at what seemed random intervals, running under the bed, knocking into dressers, almost spilling Katie's cup of tea on the bedside table. Instead of their usual ritual of posturing to see who would get to sleep by Katie's head and who would end up at her feet, no mean spot since Cal and Katie used a bed warmer during the frigid days of winter, they were all hisses, snarling cat threats and clicking claws on the wood floor. Okay then, night Cal. Katie turned over again. Both she and Cal slept facing away from each other, both grabbing the outside of the bed, which was small enough that this still left little room between them. This was fine, even though neither liked to be touching anything or anyone while sleeping. It left room for closeness without crowding either sleeper. 2 a.m. Apparently, it also left room for the cats to get between them. At first, Calvin thought that Katie was rubbing the back of his neck, the way she often did right before they went to sleep. He sighed to let her know he appreciated it. His second thought was how weird that would be for her since she never woke up in the middle of the night. Cal was the opposite. All night long, he would have to get up to go snack, get a drink of water or Diet Coke, go to the bathroom, just stay awake a teeny bit longer, Take something to make him go to sleep or to make some type of pain go away. His restlessness had no sleep schedule. If Katie woke up at all, she wouldn't likely initiate contact while he was sleeping. He shifted a little. Again, he felt something on his neck. Okay, if it wasn't Katie, then it had to be either Jojo or Desi. He shifted a bit away. He felt it again. Then he felt something else. It rubbed across his neck as something moved over his head. It was a tail although it didn't feel very furry. Whichever cat rubbed against him must have made the other jealous. Suddenly, the hissing and snarling started again. Chill out! He found himself raising his voice again. This was followed by lots of scurrying and the noise of claws on the wood floor in the hallway. He and Katie both sat up in time to see a black cat run out the door, apparently to join the other. Katie got up and shut the door. Let them sleep in the living room, she said. She sighed and went back to bed, immediately falling asleep. Cal lay away thinking about the stats he would run at work the next day, which put him out cold after about 10 minutes. 3.30 a.m. Calvin woke up to hit the head and realized that one of the fur balls was lightly scratching at the door. He opened it to get out and put his foot at the crack to prevent entrance. Something ricocheted off his foot and back into the hallway, then ran the other way. He took a leak and then stuck his head into the dark living room. One black cat sleeping on the couch, the other on the chair. You little bastards, he whispered, going back to the bedroom. 4 a.m. The cats were scratching at the door. Katie's voice woke Cal. 
He responded monosyllabically. Huh? What? She answered in kind. Doors. Cats. Claws. Noise. Her head was still on the pillow. Cal walked up to the door and lightly kicked it, knowing it would scare them. He heard scurrying on the other side. Katie mumbled, Hope we don't wake Jim. It took Cal a minute to realize who she meant. Jim was their downstairs neighbor, a quiet but friendly guy who lived alone, left the house only to go to work, and never had any visitors. Cal tried reassuring her. Jim seems to sleep through the night. I never hear him unless he coughs. I know, but... Okay, he interrupted. Let me go get them some treats. Maybe that'll calm their asses. Katie tried to soften him. Cal, it's not like they have opposable thumbs and can get their own food, so don't blame them for bothering us when they're hungry. Calvin grunted and got up. He opened the door using the foot trick again in case anyone was looking to make a sneak entrance. No one did. He went to the pantry. As soon as he jiggled the bag of treats, Jojo and Desi were running to meet him in the pantry. Hissing at each other briefly, they jostled for the position of Alpha Cat on their way. The loser had come around the corner last, but then started, looked back, and scampered back into the kitchen, all claws tip-tapping on the wood floor. Sore loser, he mumbled. On his way back to bed, he passed a black cat he realized was Desi, making her way back to the pantry through the kitchen. Your brother is already there. Better hurry or he'll eat everything, Calvin said. Closing the bedroom door behind him, Calvin spoke before he realized that Katie might not even be awake. I don't think we need to worry about their waking Jim anymore. Despite his show of nonchalance, Calvin knew he would have felt terrible if the cats had awakened their downstairs neighbor. They'd shared the two floors of the Victorian for a couple of years now, after the couple had moved there and decided they'd found the perfect apartment. They had a huge living room and den, two bedrooms, a full bath and kitchen, and a wonderfully large pantry and laundry room, and Jim was the perfect neighbor. He was helpful and lighthearted, walking everywhere he went and always whistling when he walked. Calvin had cousins who were shut-ins, so he understood Jim and felt for him, especially since he and Katie needed people around them and couldn't understand how anyone could live so alone, without even a pet for company. They really appreciated Jim during the snowy winter months, when he would usually beat them to shoveling the drive, since they generally were not early morning people, unless they had to be at work early. Usually by the time Calvin and Katie were just sitting down to have morning coffee, Jim was already outside shoveling like an unstoppable robot. 6 a.m. Calvin woke up to more hissing and snarling. This time he opened the bedroom door, not worrying about the foot trick, hoping to catch the culprits in the act. Furry animals scurried by him and under the bed. Katie woke up. What the fuck? They heard more scurrying and Katie screamed. Calvin felt something brush against him as well. Then he felt a second animal. He watched as a black tail went out of the door. Cut it out, he yelled, walking quickly behind the cats and clapping his hands loudly, an action which always broke up their fights. One ran past him into the bedroom. He found the other in the spare room, snarling near a slightly cracked window. He clapped his hands at the cat and it ran off into the other room. Calvin looked outside and saw nothing but a snow-covered roof. Brrr, he said out loud, mainly for himself. He closed the window and went back into the bedroom. In the dark, that was in the process of becoming dawn, he saw the outline of both cats in the bed. He crawled into his side and got under the covers. We may as well get up, Katie mumbled. Now, let's lay in for at least 30 minutes until we have to get up. I think the cats have finally settled. They were probably chilled. One of the windows had come open overnight, he answered. 7.30 a.m. I can make us a second pot of coffee to have on the road, Calvin said. Katie sat on the couch, holding her second cup of coffee with both hands, admiring it as if it were a sacred artifact. Sure, Cal, she said, not looking up. The two finished off both thermos bottles of coffee before they finished the 30-minute commute to work. 10 p.m. Sleep, 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 sleepies, Cal sang. This was his parody of a weird late-night television commercial for children's slippers, some kind of half-slipper, half-toy that didn't really look like much fun. The two crawled into bed, Jojo already at the foot, taking advantage of the bed warmer, and Desi waiting to get under the covers near Katie's head. 
Guess there won't be any fighting tonight. Seems they are both content with their places, Katie said. Night, Cal. 3 a.m. Calvin got up to hit the head as usual. Most nights were like clockwork. He noticed the time. He must have been exhausted, he thought to himself. He usually woke up every three hours or so. 6.30 a.m. Calvin was making coffee and warming waffles on the George Foreman. Hey, Katie, would you mind emptying the old cat food? It's beginning to smell back here, he yelled to sleepy Katie. Sorry, she mumbled as she went back to the back pantry to empty the old food. It doesn't smell that bad, she said, sniffing the dish as she walked by. It's cat food. I doubt it smells good, he answered behind her. Calvin looked out the window and noticed that the screen was slightly torn. Damn squirrels, we're going to have to pay for that screen or get it fixed if we ever decide to move, he mumbled. Katie had come back into the kitchen. Huh? Squirrels. The window screen's been torn. I'm pretty sure it wasn't like that yesterday. You sound like an old man yelling for them to get off the lawn, she joked. Anyway, why would squirrels do that, she asked. I don't know. Maybe because they're squirrely. But I know it had to be them because I see tracks on the snow outside, on the awning roof. Oh, okay, she answered, not really getting his point. Seriously, I bet it was one of them got the cats all worked up the other night. Come to think of it, I bet it was one of them managed to raise the window in the spare room a tad to get in from the cold. We're lucky Desi and Jojo didn't try to get out themselves, considering there's no screen at that window. Katie sat at the kitchen table. Now why would a cat do that? Go out on the roof, I mean. Especially ours. They're too in love with the bed warmer to entertain that thought. I doubt any kind of critter could convince them otherwise. Don't know, but when I was a kid, the neighbors had a tortie that would sit on the roof at night and stare at me. Meow, meow, meow. Katie in tone, trying hard not to laugh as she stared intently. Calvin just shook his head and kept washing plates, mumbling, crazy old cats. 10 p.m. Best thing in the world, a eucalyptus bath, Katie said as she walked into the bedroom, fluffing her wet hair. Calvin was sitting up holding a book, except he wasn't reading. I think Daisy's around again. Good thing you brought back some of that eucalyptus smell with you. Well, she is the neighborhood mascot, Cal. Skunks make lazy mascots. That's why you never see the Sam Houston Institute of Technology polecats in the BCS. Calvin had held a straight face for a full ten seconds and then chuckled. Ha ha, you're so full of it. You probably got a degree from there, she answered. Katie got into bed, and as if it were some kind of trampoline, Calvin popped up and out. I'm going to go yell at her or something. Just don't wake Jim, Katie said. Like I could, Calvin retorted. Calvin went to the spare bedroom, where the smell was at its worst, and opened the window. He looked around on the ground below and could not see Daisy's distinctive colors. He could smell her, though. The neighbor's floodlight turned on and lit up the area. Out of the corner of his eye, he saw something run across the roof to his right. In the dark, it looked like a cat, if the cat had been turned inside out, as best as he could tell with his glasses off. When it stopped to peer back at him, he caught a glimpse of its face. It made him shudder.